but he can be, but he, to me, he's a snowman. So I made him and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to adjust my screen or what. Oh no, I don't want that. Oh, I got something in the way and I don't know how to get rid of it. Uh. There we go. Okay, it's like just leave stuff alone. Okay, so this is Sparkle. And I I don't <laughs> I don't know how to get my screen adjusted. Um so that I can see. I guess I can toggle on that. You're not you're gonna see my desk now. Okay. So this is this is Sparkle. And he is made with this beautiful fabric that I got. It's made with, and I got this at Joanne's. This is what he's made out of. It's a very pretty fleece. There are some of the plush fleece that's really thick. And this is not one of those ones. So that's why when you do, when you're sewing with this, you have to use a bigger needle, like a 14 or a 16. And then um, you have to lengthen your stitch length to my average is probably a 3.0. Um, you could sew this by hand if you wanted. And I'm not looking, I'm. you guys are in my kitchen right now. <laughs> um. So this is what I made him out of. Very, very pretty. And um, I did him in, and now that I thought about it, give me just a minute. Um, like I said, it's a mess. I had to rearrange everything so that I could show you guys. Um, so I could see my computer, which isn't doing me much good right now. So I did him because his, the color of the background of the fabric wasn't really white. I did it in an ivory. And if you look at your um, white fleece, and let me see if I can, I'll show you a different, I'll show you. Because there is some white fleece that I do not like and I'm trying to see if I can find it right now because I got two different kinds actually three different kinds um, okay so there is fleece out there that's really plush you can see the texture in that um hang on some okay here we go okay the first ones I made I made out of this and if you see you can kind of maybe you can't see <clears throat> we need some light so this one is really textured okay this one, you got to find the right side, is not. So if you can see the difference, I don't like this one. It's the cheaper kind. This one that is got all that nice plush, it's a lot better. And so this is the one that is not plush. This is the one I don't like. Okay. And then here's the one that I do like. 
So it's that plush. You can kind of see the difference. This, I don't like. If this is all you can get, but this is much better. This is just a cheaper. It just, I don't like it. And I got them both at Joann's. And then the, this is another one that I got. This is an ivory. So you can kind of see that. And then I have, so I have two different whites. Just a second. I have two different whites. And then I have two different off-whites. So this is the plush. This is the ivory. So you can kind of see the difference. This is the ivory. This is the white. These are the plusher ones. I like these ones better because I just think this doesn't look good. I don't like the, uh, you can see even the background of the fabric. Uh, okay. So let me see if I can get us set up and get started. I've got some stuff already sewn. So I will try to go over. Here's another one I made. I made this one and I was trying to give him hair and it was very hard to do another one like this because I'd use fur and I don't think I cut a very big strip. It was very, very tiny and kind of long. So, and I've done where I've used some eyeshadow around his eyes and his cheeks. So I did that one and then we did, I did this one. So there's, you can kind of see the difference in size. I can't see any comments. Okay. Hi, Tanya. Nancy, good. You can see. Yay. Okay. Hi, Christine Mack. Okay. So this is a bigger one. This one is about from the top of his head to his feet. He's about 15 inches. And little snowball, aka sparkle. He's about 10 inches or so. So you can see the difference. And they both have the same fabric. And the buttons that I used on the bigger one, I got in at Walmart. They're awesome. They come in a hole in a jar with a bunch of different shapes and color of like browns. So they're very, very pretty. And so I did the two different sizes. This takes a lot more stuffing and stuff. Okay. So we're going to go over everything and I'm really going to try to get you guys to see what I'm doing and try to be able to see my comments. So, um, I don't know how this is going to work. I might have to turn you guys around with my camera <clears throat> and I'll just have to run back and forth and see if there's any comments because, um, I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. So. Okay, I gotta switch my camera. There we go. Okay, we'll get there. I'll eventually get this figured out, you guys. <laughs> Hang on. Don't go anywhere. I'm trying to get my microphone, and I don't know if I even need it, but... cousin it's being more of a pain than anything right now okay I gotta unplug this microphone and I'm just gonna use my phone microphone on my phone and hopefully it's enough because I can't it's just weighing my phone down and it won't let me do anything. No, 
Okay, so... Hi, Heather. If I don't say hi, it's because I can't see. And I'm over here, and you guys are back. You're back... Back here. You're... <laughs> I can't see my camera. This is... Ugh, I'm going to have to run back and forth. So... And I'm not, I'm going to have to try really hard when I show you guys how to do sewing and stuff because I don't know how to get my camera to show you what I'm doing. Okay, so what we're first going to do is I have my patterns and I'm going to link these below and there is a free, going to be a free PDF. Um, I apologize, you guys. There was um, the pattern links to quite a few patterns, and I was in my Google Drive, and I thought I was um, just cleaning it up because it said I didn't have a lot of space. Well, I deleted them, and then that took it, that took care of it right off of the videos. So I redid those today after my meeting. So they should be back on there. If they're not, send me a comment and let me know. Okay. Okay, I gotta swipe my comments. If I pronounce your name wrong, it's I'm very sorry. Is it Janine? I'm I'm gonna call you Jean because I I'm, I'm terrible at pronunciation. Okay, so these are our patterns. And if I can find the rest of them. Ahead. Okay, I'm missing the feet and <clears throat> oh gosh, I had them all here and now I don't know where the rest of them went because I had a mitten. Well, I got that is the the arm and the foot. There's um, that's one mitten. I got a couple of different mittens. This is for the large snowman, but that's what the arm looks like for the small, except it's shorter. And I don't know where they went right now. Because I had them all here. Okay, so I'm gonna, I have um, a body cut out. There it is. I think I have them all sewed. Just a sec, guys. Okay, so I'm going to see, I'm going to bring you guys over here and we're going to cut out some fabric. Okay, so I'm trying to find you guys some place to sit. Th I you guys, this, uh, I apologize if this is very unorganized because I know it is. So, okay, we're going to cut the fabric and I'm just going to show you how I do it. And eventually when my son gets done with college, he's got this year and next year that I'm taking over his room. So. <laughs> Okay, so just a tip, when you buy your fabric, and I'm going to cut this because I just have a big mound of it here. When you buy your, your um, fleece, 
if you try to keep it folded like it comes, because um, you have to cut this on the stretch, and I'm just going to cut a chunk off here. So if you keep it folded like this, and try to remember that this way it stretches, you want to cut the body, and I'll show you again. So I have, I have right sides together, and, and I'm going to use a pen. I know some people are probably like, oh my God, she's going to put marker fabric up with pen. And it's, I've tried other ways, and I've tried the chalk, and it just, the disappearing doesn't work for me because I cut so much at once that by the time I get to it, it's uh, done for. Okay, so I'm just going to take a pen. I'm going to trace my fabric, my pattern. And I'm doing it on the stretch. This is the stretch. Okay, if I were to do it this way, this would not stretch when I go to stuff it. And you want it to stretch. And I'm doing this on the wrong side. So nobody freak out about my pen. And then for the head is the bigger circle. So these are the patterns that will be for the um, free link. And then I've been doing a supplies list for you guys with that also. So that's, this is a bigger one. If it's too big, when you guys, when you guys sew this, you're going to sew on the inside. Okay. And this is for all the patterns. When I do my patterns on Canva, I can't do a stitch line. I just. Too much work so this might not be exactly the same size as this but and we're going to use this for his little coat or shirt whatever you want to call it and then we're going to trace around you're going to cut two for the body and then two for the head so this is the head and then the smaller one is for the base and i'm just going to go a little bigger Just so that I know I have enough. And if it, I'd rather have the circle for the base too big rather than too small. So this is what we're cutting, this base. So this is going to be a little larger. You're going to go on the inside. And we're going to try to remember which one is his head. So if you just want to cut that out. On the outside of the line, you can do that. And I've been using a gray thread when I do mine. And this is the head, so I just leave, I cut out extra. And when I cut this out, and I use the extra, when I go to sew it, I'm going to start, where'd my pen go now? I'm going to start here and I'm going to end here so that we can leave this open to stuff it and then I'll show you, show you how I sew it. So let's get these cut out. This one you're going to cut out right on the line and you're going to end up cutting two of these. These are, this is the base. Okay, and now we're going to cut out uh, we need his mittens, his little mitts. So I'm going to do this one. And I'm just tracing around it. And I'm going to make it longer. I did on the pattern. So you're going to have to do cut four. So you have enough for two hands. And I did his arms a couple of different ways, and then I figured out uh, an easier way, and we'll get to that. Oh, I almost cut the tip off. Okay, so that's for the body. Now for the... Um, for his clothes, for his jacket and his arms, we're going to take... 
And we're going to take the same pattern that we used for the body. And my cat wants to go outside. So I line my edges up. And then you're going to take the same pattern that I just had. And this is going to be cut shorter. So if you want to make, I think I cut, made this smaller on the pattern. This one is the, is both of mine. So you can make it a little bit small, shorter. If you want to, you can hem it on the bottom. And that's what I did on some of mine. And I like the hemming. Um... It just it finishes it off but you don't have to if you're using fleece and then I did not hem up here by the neck so that's for his jacket okay and now his sleeves I wish I had my other pattern um let's see well I just had And we have to cut out his shoes so I'm just gonna cut this out and I did his shoes a few different ways and I will go over that when we get to that part and you don't have to add the hair because I'm not adding hair to all of mine when I make them and then this is for his arm I had one but I lost it okay so you're gonna cut four arms out I do them two together because there's gonna be I'll show you and some of the arms I was making in the beginning were big so I had to make them smaller. And then his shoes, you're going to do two for his shoes. All of this is cut on the stretch. Okay. Oops. Yeah, we don't want to do it that way. And some of his shoes I made a little bigger and then I had to sew them smaller. Depended on the size of my snowman. Oops. And I am nervous, you guys, so if I make mistakes, that's why. <laughs> And we all make mistakes. So I'm going to cut these out larger than they are supposed to be. So when I first did his, his shoes or his feet, I sewed them together and then I cut a piece of cardboard and tucked them inside the shoe. Can you guys still hear me? Let me know. Somebody comment. So yeah, if you guys, if you don't have Facebook, that video I was doing yesterday and I was not going to post it. And then I thought, oh my God, it's too funny. I can't, I crack myself up every time I watch it. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to see how this works. Okay, so now I have to get a chair so I can sit down. So we're going to sew this, and I'm going to show you how I sew it and pin it so that if there's any questions, um, I got to get a chair. It'll fit. And it's a good thing my husband's not home because I don't like doing stuff like this when he's home. I got the whole house a disaster. Okay. So, and we need some light here. Uh, 
trying not to get my okay, that light might be a little bright okay so we're gonna take first the body and we're just going to sew and I'm really trying to let so you guys can see I think that light is too bright So I'm going to sew, I'm going to do, and you want the, make sure that your bottom edges our, <clears throat> you know what I did? I can't tell. I'm trying to see if I had them wrong sides together or right sides together. I think I had right sides together. Or I mean wrong sides. So, oh well. So we're going to make sure our bottom is even because you want this to be even on the bottom of his body. For when we sew on the, the base of it. And I got to turn up my stitch length. And if you have a hard time going through the fabric, try to go slow at first. Until you get going, you might have to push it through. So you're going to make sure you get both edges on there. And if you have a hard time sewing, it's probably because of your stitch length and if your fabric is too thick and your needle. And I had mentioned that I think on the other video where... My, I was using um, wounded bobbins, if that's a word, from Walmart, and my machine was just going wacky on me. So now we're going to do the other side, and you're going to backstitch on the, both the beginning and the end. Oh, that doesn't help. I was trying to get the light. The light was kind of bright. You guys, I'm. This would be a better video if I didn't do it live. <laughs> Maybe I need to get my wine. And then I trim off the excess. So we don't want all this bulk inside. And if you guys leave me because you're bored or whatever, I'll understand. It's all good. Okay, so now we're going to take the base and you're going to take the right side. And like I said, I had the wrong sides together. So, And I'm going to line it up and pin it. Oh, I really am in a not a good spot to sew right now. So we're going to pin this together. So I have my, this is my body. I always start at the side seam and line the edge of the circle up with the seam. Just like that. And then pin it. You have to pin it. There's not going to be any way. If you can do this and not pin it, you're a really good sewer. And then you're just going to match your base the edge of your base with the bottom edge of the body and you're just going to go all the way around and pin it and i'm left-handed and i have my pins pointing this way the points going that way if you do it the other way i guess that will, but i tried it that way and the head of my pin was just in the way and it was annoying Uh, let's see, I don't know if anybody else has come. So if I can't, if you guys are making comments, I can't see them. Or if you're just watching. So then I'm going to go all the way around. And I do this, I sew this like I do some of my other bodies, like um, Grandma Ellie. And, oh my gosh, I'm trying to think of who else. 
Um, I can't think of anything right now. So that's what your bod the bottom is going to look like. Okay? It's like that. So now I'm going to start, and I'm not right on a pin, I'm going to put it under. Let's see if you guys can maybe, if I can get you over here. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to start, like I said, not on a pin. You don't have to take your pins out. You might nick it a little bit, but you should be okay. Or were you better up here? Maybe if I stood up and sewed, this would probably be better. I don't know. There's just bright light down there, and it's really... Okay, I'm going to try this. And you don't have to backstitch at the beginning because we're going to go over it when we get to that part. So you're going to go around. And this is really thick. I'm going to lengthen to my stitch length to 3.5. And you kind of got to help it along because it's really thick going through here. And I stop and adjust and I hang on. I'm hanging on to the middle of my fabric, the body right here, making sure the bottom, everything is, nothing is tucked underneath. And now we're going to come back to the beginning and I'm going to take a couple of pins out there that I don't need. And I started buying these bowls at the dollar store. They're for your cats and your dogs. They have like a rubber bottom. Oops. They have a rubber bottom and they come in like a hot pink in this and they work great for all my pins and stuff like that. And I still have my um, giveaway to do. I want you guys to tell me where you live. Send me if you want to say that right now. If you just want to abbreviate your the state. Or if you're from another country, let me know. Because I know there are guidelines and stuff. And as far as giving away and prizes and stuff like that for overseas. Um, so that's why it's taken me so long. And I'm at 3,000 subscribers. Yay. Thank you guys so much. And I'm going to cut some of this excess off. Because we don't need all that. So we got our bottom sewed. Make sure you check it. Everything is sewed. Okay. And now we're going to do his hands. And like I said, you guys are probably freaking out. She's using a pen on her fabric. And I did. I got my wrong sides together. So it's all good. And then this is where you're going to want to backstitch also. Because we have to turn this right side out. And you have to push it through. So when you come up to the thumb and you start turning, I get so far and then I stop it, lift my presser foot up and turn it a little bit. If you're a sewer, you guys know how to do this. And then turn it so I can get down in that peak where the thumb is. And then go up by the mitt. When I get going on these, I can sew them really fast. And I'm even going to stop short because I think this, his mitt is going to be a little longer than I needed to. So I'm going to cut some of that off. And because we're going to tuck this inside his sleeve. So I'm going to back stitch these. And like I said, I've been using like a light gray thread on all of my. Um, my fabrics on any of my other colored um, ones that I was doing. I got to turn it around so I can see it. And it seems like it, it's fine. It, I don't, you know, if it shows a little bit, I mean, it's going to go, going to get kind of embedded in the fleece. Um, so, I mean, I even did it on a buffalo plaid one. Okay, so there's our first mitten. This one I'm going to cut down. So I'm going to kind of match. So 
so Karen's from Minnesota. Hi, Veronica. From England. Heather is from Ontario. Julie's from Connecticut. Heather's a lefty too. Yay. <laughs> okay. You guys are awesome. I think I have the best subscribers ever. Okay. And if you make his mitten too big, when you go to turn it right side out and it's too big and it's too big for his body, then you just turn it wrong side out and make it a little smaller because that's what I've had to do on some of mine. Especially when I was first starting to make these. Because sometimes your bodies, even though you use the same pattern, they don't end up a, end up the same size. Because it's going to depend on how um, much you stuff it. Okay, so we have his mittens sewed. Now we're going to sew his head. And we're going to start at this point and go around. I'm going to sew on this line. So if you... And that's how I've done it. So this one... The head, I would not go in a quarter inch unless you want a smaller head. But um, I was always sewing on the line when I did mine. And then you're going to back stitch really good because we have to turn that right side out. And we're going to hand sew this shut. And then make sure you can see your underneath so you're getting all of your fabric. Nothing is tucked under. So yeah, this was a good weekend to do this with my husband being gone. He went hunting. I don't like being by myself at night, though. I have to close the curtains if I'm in the den. Yeah, it's like... And then, so then I went to bed last night. And I grabbed my purse. I grabbed my shoes. I grabbed a coat. <laughs> I grabbed a knife. I thought, <laughs> if anybody's going to come get me, I'm going to have something to protect myself. <laughs> Um, oh, let me get his body, if I can get out, or his shirt, or do I have it? I have, I don't have his shirt, shirt. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I sew, um, there's a couple of different ways you can sew the, the, the hem. You want to do it individual and have it nice. And this, I really lengthen my stitch. I'll probably go to like a four or even a 4.5 or a 5. And this you don't have to backstitch because we're going to sew that into the side seam. And if you don't get these, if they don't match up, well, I'll, I'll, we'll get there. Just hang out. I'll, I'll talk about it in a second. Okay, and then when you go back, remember to put your stitch length back down. So now with this, we're going to take both of these. We're going to cut our threads. And then we're going to put these together. So now when you do this, if you weren't paying attention and you didn't have your both your hems the same, it's no big deal. We'll cut this little bit off here. You see that? So I have it even down here, but up here I'm off a little bit. I'm not worried about this because I'm going to cut it off. I'm not going to hem that because that's going to get covered up by the scarf. So we're going to match our sides. And you have to make sure this is on the stretch. I'm going to keep saying it. And I went to Joanne's yesterday, and I wanted to find some more of this fabric um, of the blue snowman, and I don't, um, I don't know where he is right now. I had, I have, oh, I have one that's partially done. Um, I. So now you're going to sew the other side. You're going to line up. And see, my sides don't line up 
on the right here. I'm not too worried about it. Well, there, now it did because it wasn't, I didn't have it pulled over. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I should, I should tell you, I should, maybe I should reenact the little video I did last night. My sister's seen it. <clears throat> um, Gloria that's on here. I posted it on Facebook. It was hilarious. I was just saying, I was going to do my, if I can talk like I was talking. Um, I was just trying out my microphone and going to go live. We're going live tomorrow, October 16th, Saturday. And, oh, yeah. And then I said, we're going to, and I can't say it because I'm live. Um, oh, we got to sew his shoes and his feet. See, now I'm talking and I said, we're going to make that, we're going to make that blankety blank snowman. He is so freaking cute. It's hilarious, you guys. It was, okay, so now I'm talking and not paying attention to what I'm doing. And the feet I had to, I had to make. I had to sew a uh, smaller and so and this one might be even too big so because I didn't follow my advice what I said so on the inside of the line you're gonna back stitch so there's a few different shoes I'll have for you and there's gonna be a really easy one you don't need any cardboard or nothing. Because the way I did, um, I'm going to call him Sparkle because that's his, that was his first name. <clears throat> I'll bring him up here. We'll also show you in a minute. Because um, I did his feet differently than I did the big one that I made just like him. Okay, so now we're going to do the arms, and these arms are going to get sewn quite a bit smaller. So it's all going to depend on how big our body is stuffed. I have other ones done that are already smaller. So I'm just going around. I'm going on the inside, and you can't, guys can't see very well. It's all this bright light that's like, I watch so many videos on going live and then I was, and I don't know how I did it. I was trying to get my computer and stuff. I had my computer screen, my lap, my, my personal computer. I don't have a laptop. It's a big one. I had my screen, my desktop upside down. I could not figure out how I did it. And I had down, down here is where I stand in front. I had my keyboard. And I think my stomach had touched the keyboard somehow and flipped it. So I had to go. And that's when I was trying to go live. And I was supposed to be live. And I was trying to get it back. I shut my computer off. I came back and it was still flipped. So then I had to look it up. And all I had to do was hit... Control alt and the arrow and it flipped it. It was just stupid. I was surprised I was not in tears, you guys. Okay, so we got his arms, we got his mitts. Now we're gonna go back over here. Let me get you set back up again. So I gotta see. Um yep, my sister Gloria, she's from Minnesota. Yeah, I know. It's still on there. It's funny, isn't it, Julie? I just about die. <clears throat> I was listening, watching it last night, and I thought, I'm going to post it. It's just too funny not to. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to make some room here to see if I got my light is too bright. Yeah, it's kind of too bright. No, i got to get this chair out of the way. 
I'm going to turn this off. Okay, so so here's how I did sp sparkle. Sparkle, sn snowball sparkle. There's my cat. I did his feet on the outside. When I did the big one, <clears throat> I did his feet underneath. So that's how I did his underneath. So he's standing on them. These ones I did not put any um cardboard or anything in i just sewed them and then i just glued it shut i didn't even tuck that end in so i'll go over that with you i don't know where to put them okay so we're gonna get to making this the body we got the body and you're gonna need something to put inside like a piece of a heavy piece of cardboard or I've been using a canning lid and they're kind of hard to find but I got some my mother oh was it been two years my sister Gloria's on here that she moved out of her house after her dad passed away and uh she had canning lids. I should have got them from her. So I'm going to try a big one. And I could have made this so I could get my hand in here because it really doesn't want to stretch. I mean, it, it will when I get, but. So, and I'm trying to see if that cardboard piece, if that's going to be too big. It'll be fine. Then what I did if I can find it, because I had stuff. It's like I told you guys I'm not prepared. I thought I was. I really thought I was. And I can't find it. <clears throat> I had a bag of rice is what I had. So what I did was I took some rice and I put it in a bag. Normally, when I first did them, I would put the rice in there, but then it would kind of go underneath either, either the cardboard or whatever. So you're going to put this rice in. And then I got to get my stuffing. See, I can't even hardly get my arm in here. I'm going to cut some of this off. So you kind of have to practice um, on this. So what we're going to do, when you, when you use your stuffing, try to pull it apart. I got to get some stuff out of the way. Try to pull it apart so that it's not a big ball. So when you put it in here, I go and I try to tuck it around the bag so that I'm going inside and I got my hands and I'm going inside there and tucking the uh, stuffing all around that bag so it kind of is going to maybe take up some of the noise when somebody picks it up and stuff. But then you want it you, you want them nice and plump down there too. So this is where you have to take your time and stuff and you kind of have to keep looking at the whole thing all the way around it. <clears throat> oh, we've been on for an hour and a half. <laughs> so I'm just tucking that in there. And if you want a bigger one, you're going to have to work with your sizes and your fabric that you get. Some of the, um, like the thinner, the cheaper fabric I got stretched a lot more. 
And if you can't get down there when you're stuffing, you can use like your, you have a turning stick. I even tried to get somebody to come help me do this and read my comments, but it wouldn't have worked out because there wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have been able to do it on my computer. So, oh, eventually I'll get totally organized and figured out. But thank you guys for joining me today. I appreciate it so much. Even though I was unorganized and late. So there's the body of our snowman. So that looks that looks good. It's good. Now we're gonna do his head. And I have one done already. And it doesn't really matter that I did the wrong side. But so now we're gonna take this and you're gonna make sure. And I think I have to. I'm gonna turn it right side out. Just want to make sure I got it all sewed because there was one. Was this the one? Oh, that's not the one I just did. I'm like, <laughs> totally different. So I'm going to cut this down. And be careful you don't cut your, cut too close to your stitch line. Your stitch, stitching line. Your stitches. And I did not go around and do a little um, how you can clip it for curves didn't even need to and I left it long right here so that we can sew that and tuck it in okay I gotta see you what you guys are seeing so oh you can't see very much okay there we go so you're going to leave this, turn it, you're going to leave this light, you're going to leave this long here. You're going to leave some so you can tuck it in, okay? So we're going to turn this right side out, and we're going to stuff his head. And what you can do with your turning stick is just run it alongside, around, along the edge of your seam to kind of push it out. <clears throat> And if I had this in a big ball, I would pull it apart and then shove it in there. And one way I've kind of done it is I've started hanging on to it like this when I go to put some stuffing in. I'll hang on to it. I got like my ring finger, middle finger in there actually my middle fingers and tucking it in and you this is what you got to stuff really good even though it gets covered up by a hat and you can kind of shape his head a little bit but I just stuff it and as I'm when I'm stuffing it in I've tucked in that edge also and I'm using um, crochet thread. You guys, look, this is what I did. I did that with my thread. And I had a couple other ones. With my black one, it wasn't working out because of the it being this. So I just shoved it on there. And I did that. And I had another one my off-white one that I did like this too and it worked out really well so that I could just pull it off and I had it um, up on up in front of me on by my desk so that was just one way for me to keep everything to keep these straight and I gotta put Okay, well that one isn't working out on there. Okay, we well, lost our head. So it looks like I got it stuffed pretty good. So let me get my needle. And I like the longer, thinner needles. 
and if you use too thick of a thread you it gets hard to get through your needle unless you have one of the threaders and I'm just going to take a decent amount and then I'm going to tie my knot like I do the surgeon's knot but when I do these I must wrap it like five six times around here and it still works and if you watch when you pull it together it just all lines up it's really cool so then I cut it not too close to the knot and I'm gonna make sure I can get you guys so that you can see this Okay, I'm just going to turn you a little bit here. Because I'm going to stand back here. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to try and show you this so you guys can see. Because I don't know how to adjust my camera. So we're going to start. Let me bring you guys down here to see if this will work. Okay, so I gotta be able to see what you guys are seeing. So you're gonna go with your needle on the underneath side by the seam with your knot and your thread. And I've threaded my needle like I always do. So I have one long end. So I have a tail. So if I mess up, I can take my needle off and pull my thread out and not have to do re you know take everything apart okay so now we're gonna go you're gonna go so your needles coming out here and I know I'm using white thread and you're just gonna take a stitch okay and I believe this is like called the ladder stitch and then you're gonna go on the other side and I don't take big stitches. And you can't take tiny ones either. And you don't even have to tighten this right away. You can. But I'll go about half. So I'm going back and forth. Taking a stitch on one side. And then the other. And I'm probably taking quarter inch stitch length. And now when you take and you pull that. And your thread's going to break. Well, that just needs to not happen on live video. And you know what? I bought a... I bought a thinner thread because I thought it would be easier. And I was wrong. And so don't buy the thinner stuff because it sucks. <laughs> now I have to find my red okay if this was the one I was using I don't think it was okay give me just a minute you guys because I know I got okay I'm gonna use my this is really thick oh I had a ball. I had a container. I had some of this that was thicker, and I bought the thinner stuff. And now I don't know where the thinner, this thicker stuff is. So, okay. So let's start all over. So make sure you buy a thicker thread. And what do I tell you guys? Make sure you buy strong thread. And now I'm gonna have. And I don't know where my threader is, so I'm gonna have to get a fatter needle. This is really, I don't know where my other thread is. Ah, I found it. Yay. And I don't know what size this is, but the this size that I bought is like a size 10. So I'll get the thicker stuff. Okay, so we're going to get that out of our way. And we're going to thread our needle. Yeah, we're going to try this all over again. 
Oh, I have to see about comments. You use nylon thread? I I guess I've not ever thought about using nylon. <clears throat> um I just always have used this kind for my gnomes, so I usually have it. And I have some I have a piece of black thread in with my other thread, unless it was a from a marker or something. So I'm going about probably five or six times pulling that, tying my knot that I got really close, cut really close. Okay, so now we're gonna go back. And now that I got a fatter needle. So now you got, you're coming out by the side. This is the side seam. Now you're gonna go on the other side of it Pull up a stitch. Go back to the other side. So now I'm trying to go through all this fabric with this thick needle. Okay. And I didn't have my needles all threaded and stuff either, so. Um, and I don't know where the one was that I was using. Let me try this one, see if it's any better. And if it gets hard to pull, I have to use my needle nose pliers. Because some of this fabric is this fleece, if it's the plush, it's really thick. So you just pull that. And tighten it up. And then you're going to keep going back and forth from side to side. Or if you want to sew this a different way. Um, I guess you could hot glue it. But I like the sewing. And then tuck those in. So your it's called the ladder stitch because when you look at it before you pull it, it looks like a ladder. So that's kind of what it looks like. And then you pull those up. And don't break your thread. <laughs> Yeah, when I buy needles, it's like I got a whole, look at, this is all my needles. And I probably, I don't even use half of them. I use the skinnier ones. And then I bend them. And I have no idea where the needle went that I used. If I stuck it in my, so you're going to go back and forth each side. And then... My stitch didn't get tightened up here. And if it doesn't get that tight, it, it's going to get sewed so nobody is going to see it. But I think I did break my thread a little bit. And then tuck that in. And then I do one more stitch. And if I can't get it through, then I got to push it and not stab myself. And now we're just going to leave that and then we're going to sew his body. We're going to sew it the same way. And okay. Give me a second. I'm going to try to get you guys up here a little bit. <clears throat> okay. So let me get a thinner needle. 
and some thread. You can use an <clears throat> excuse me embroidery floss <coughs> and just use all six strands. And that would work out too. And I'm trying to get my needle threaded. Oh my gosh. I know I have a threader here somewhere. I'm not going to find it right now. Okay, when you cut it off, cut it not long enough so you don't have to thread your needle again. Okay, then do your knot about five, six times. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start at the side seam. And when you're, when you're doing this, when you get to the end, if it feels like you need some stuffing, put some stuffing in there before you close it up all the way. <clears throat> so then you're just going to go back and forth. I think it's hard to get my needle through because of this thick thread. And I just bought this skein. I had another one that I bought. It was a little tiny ball. And it was really nice. But I thought I'll be economical and save some money and get the big one. And then last night I got the thinner one. And that didn't. I could have doubled it, I guess. So we're kind of just going back and forth. And nobody's going to see this, so if you do it a different way and you can see your stitches, doesn't matter because you're going to put his head on there. And I would not recommend gluing his head on. Because you want somebody to pick it up and have his head fall off. And... I just had to check and see, make sure I wasn't, it was still uh, charging, which I could plug my charger cord in. Okay. So who's still with me? <laughs> They're like, oh, we're going to go watch the replay. Who's still here? Thanks for coming, Heather. Yeah, it's getting towards supper time for some people. Okay, so this is good with the stuffing, so I don't have to add any. And I'm going to tuck that in. And we're going to leave that there. And then I'm going to knot his head off. Knot it off. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to take it and put the thread through to the middle of the head. And I'm going to take up a stitch. And then go through that loop a couple of times. Pull it up. And then go through and then come out someplace else. So I can hide the end of that thread. And I always pull my thread so that it will pop in there. And now we're going to take and sew our head on. 
So let me make sure I got you guys so you can see. Yeah, my cat wants to go outside. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start. I got this over here, so I'm going to start at the edge. I'm going to take up a stitch. And then you're going to sew it on. And I start on the outside ouch if you poke yourself make sure you don't bleed on your snowman and then tighten that thread up so i gotta watch make sure i'm not bleeding and i'm going to take it i took a stitch down on the body now i'm going to take one on the head and you're going to have to make sure that you get this sewed on securely otherwise it'll be really wobbly wiggly and i usually go around twice so I got a stitch on the head. Now I'm going down with a stitch on the body. And then you're going to go back, back and forth from the body to the head. This is hard because I'm trying to see and he's got dirt on his face. I think I need to go wash my hands. Okay, let me go wash my hands so I'm not getting dirt and stuff on his face. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. No, I can't grab my needle. So you're going to go all the way around. This is hard to do and show you guys at the same time. And then when you come to this side, you're going to just go. I go through both. Right like that. Okay. And then make sure you're pulling your thread tight. And now we're down the body, we're gonna go up in the head. And then you're gonna go down. So I take big stitches, you can't take tiny ones, otherwise they might rip out. I thought I was going to get a lot done this weekend, and I haven't got done as much as I thought I was. So now I'm coming up, and that's pretty good. That's not too wiggly for me. So I'm going to go in. Come back out where we started, or close to it. And then I'm going to take this thread, because I want it back here. If I can get it in there. I'm going to poke it. So it comes out somewhere by his neck, right there. And then I'm just going to take a loop up and take a couple of stitch, take, um, go through the loop two, three times. And then I'm going to take that thread and I'm going to go back through, probably come out the other side. So 
so that I can hide that thread inside his body. And that'll get covered up around his neck by his scarf. Okay, so there's our body. So let me put you guys back up here. Okay, who's still here? Julie's still here. Hi, I'm Milty Sweet Pea. Is that how you say it? Thank you for hopping on. Okay, so now we got that. We have his body. And I'm going to cut. Um, I got a better pair of scissors that I like to use. I'm going to cut some of the. When I cut the. This, I'm going to cut this off because sometimes it shows when I put this, his little coat or shirt on. So I just cut it up at an angle and I try not to cut my stitch line and you don't have to. I mean, if your seams aren't huge, but I usually cut them down so that there's not a lot of bulk. And then just try not to cut your stitch line. And then I'll do the same thing up by the neck as I kind of angle those like that. Okay. I do that pretty much on my gnomes too. And then you're going to turn that right side out. And this is one reason why you got to do this on a stretch. So you can stretch it over his head. You could put this on before you put his head on, but I'd rather not have it in my way. And then you're going to pull that down. We want a little bit of the bottom of his body to show. So you can tuck this in by his neck. And then match up your side seams of the, we'll say this is his shirt. And the side seams of the snowman. And then we have, so we're going to set that aside. So we have his arms and his mittens so we're going to cut all that excess and the thread off so let me cut my thread so i'm going to cut pretty close to that stitch line and then when i go in i'll show you because it's kind of hard right now to show you so when i cut my mitten I went, I got it, this is hard. I did a little notch in here. So just don't cut your stitch line. Otherwise, you got to re-sew it. Okay? So I do that on both of them. And then we'll turn these right side out and see if they need to be smaller. If they do, I have other ones that I've already sewed. And if you can't get the tip out, take a needle and go in there. Be very carefully to kind of push it out. You don't want to rip the thread, the stitch. So I got a two craft fairs coming up the first two weekends in November. So I got to try to get some of these made. I got to try to get some more gnomes made. So there's our mitts and we're just going to stuff these really lightly. So if you can get it in to his thumb a little bit and I've taken my needle nose players and kind of pushed it in there. Um, I did have one of my subscribers, she uses a pair of, um, is it hemostats and to, um, which I did see somebody else doing that where they use, um, hemostat, is that what they're called? Hemostats to, um, use to fill up their mitten or their, whatever they were making. Um, but one of my subscribers, she uses it instead of the needle moles to pull out if your needle is too going through that thick material, but I just, I guess I've always had those. 
and I don't want his mittens to be too thick so I just kind of stuff them lightly so it depends on how you want them stuffed and then you're gonna stuff it all the way to the end so I did cut these down and I'll show you what we're gonna do in a minute with the sleeves I got too much now. Okay, so now we're just going to leave, set that aside. And then we're going to take our arm um, sleeves. And you're going to cut all that excess off. And we have to sew again. <laughs> So, and I don't have one done either where I have the arms sewn on and I can't take a break and do it either. So you're going to turn these right side out and then we're going to stuff these. And you can stuff it as much as you want. I don't want them too big. <sighs> it's already 4 o'clock. Stuff it all the way to the end. So when we sewed it, we just sewed it in around. And then you're going to put his little mitt or his hand. Then you're going to tuck that inside. And I think I need some more stuffing. So you're going to stuff that in there. Just like that. And we're going to glue that shut. That one I did glue. And it was fine. And this one, I got to cut it down a little bit more, I think. I might have to cut that one down because his arm is going to be too long. And if you have to use something to tuck this in there. Let's see if they're both the same. Yep. Pretty close. We're going to cut this down a little bit. And you could glue these on. I might glue this on. I don't know. We'll see what I feel like right now. Because I know this is, video is getting pretty long. <clears throat> okay, you got to get my glue gun. So you're just going to take and make sure you have your glue gun clean. Your tip of your glue gun and then you're going to lift up this and you're going to run your glue gun underneath there and then lay it down and then go all the way around and press it down and make sure both mittens are the same And now I need a glue stick. Okay, so there we have that. And for his feet, we're going to cut the excess off. I'm going to cut more off. We'll have to see if these are going to be too big, so we're not going to turn these... Well, we can do it right now, I guess. So 
So cut this off and then we'll turn it right side out and we'll see if these are going to be too big or not. <clears throat> but I have other ones I could use too. So you just want to do it just like that. Hi, Diana. Okay, so these are good. This one is a little, it could be a little skinnier, but I have one done. Oh, somewhere. Somewhere over the rainbow. Okay, so there I have another one. So what you're going to do with these, and we'll take, and we'll see, I take, and I'm going to cut this one a little shorter. And then you're going to set him on there and see if they're big enough if they're too small if they're too big then that's when you're going to want to fix them or sew them smaller and then i'm going to take my glue gun and i'm going to go right inside the opening not right next to it because it'll squeeze out and then very gently close that try not to squeeze a lot so it looks like that. Perfect. Easy, easy, easy. You could put cardboard in there if you want to, but you really don't have to if you do, if he has a nice base on the bottom of his body. That's why I do either cardboard or the um, canning lids. And then just squeeze that gently and there we have his shoes his little feet okay so now let's we're getting there we didn't cut his hat we have to cut his hat okay so let me see I need a thin I need a skinny needle okay I'm gonna try this thinner thread but I'm gonna double it and knot it like I usually don't like to do because I can't sit here and have you guys watch me for the next 20 minutes so his arm's on. So I'm going to double this and keep it long enough. And then I'm going to tie a knot. <clears throat> I haven't eaten at all, you guys. I had cappuccino when I was... <clears throat> had my meeting today. Haven't eaten. Me and my husband have been losing weight. He's lost 15 pounds. It makes it easier when you're doing it together. <clears throat> and I've lost, um, let's see, how much have I lost? About 30 pounds in probably a year because I was at my heaviest I was 183 last year okay so now you're going to make sure his arms he's got a black spot so this is going to be his front if there's one part of the arms like these with the um, pine cones we want those on the outside so you're going to make sure and I have sewed some of his arms kind of on the back so you're going to make sure that they're where you want them. And I'm going to take, let me make sure you guys can see this. Let's see. Let me, let me try something here. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna take, I gotta make sure I get the arm, back of his head. 
So I'm going to take a stitch and I'm going to go right on the, this is going to be the side of the arm that's going to be sticking out. So I'm going to take this stitch and go right underneath there. Actually, I wanted it up further, but, and I cut that off. So I'm going to sew it so it's a little behind this seam. And then I kind of curve it and angle it. So you're going to grab some of the fabric. Make sure you get through to the body. And then I try and work my way up by the shoulder. I got to make sure you guys are seeing this. So you're going to try to work your way up to the shoulder and sew this. There's going to be no right or wrong way to sew this on. I just try to grab some of the fabric and pull it and I just don't want it to show. So I've gone in the body, now I'm going to go into the shoulder by on the arm and I'm going to go back into the body. And when I do that, I'm pulling my thread and I've got some fabric. And then you're going to go back into the arm. So you want to figure out how you want his arm um, to be, if you want it bent, if you want it um, straight or whatever. So now I'm going back into the body. Back to the arm. And when I go from like the arm to the body, I'm not going to go way out here. I got to go, so I'm going to go underneath it kind of, okay? This is hard to sew and show you guys at the same time. So I'm going back into the, I went to the body and I'm going back to the arm. And I'm going to try and get his arm to curl up a little bit. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to go in here, and then I'm going to go underneath, and I'm going to come back here, and now I'm going to try and work around the back side. So I'm going to go up to his shoulder, or let's see, nope, I'm going to go, I'm going to stay down here. I'm going to take a stitch in his arm. I'm going to go in the body. So you're kind of going up from the body to the arm, from the body to the arm. So now I'm coming out by the side of the seam of the arm. And I got my thread all tangled up. I wonder what the longest live YouTube video is. <laughs> And then I just want to get that so it lays down there. So I got from the body to the head, back, or to the head, to the arm. And I'm getting close by the seam so I can get that sewed. You could glue this on if you wanted to, if you really didn't want to sew it. But I prefer to sew it. And I thought about trying to sew the arms on with the head not on, but I would rather not do that either. Okay, so now we have that sewn on, and we're just going to leave that, we'll just leave that like that, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to try to come out, try, my needle's not really long enough. I'm going to try to go out, go to the other side and not poke myself. I'm going to know that. If you want to knot that off, that you could do that. I'm just trying to save time right now. So 
So now I get my I get my thread knotted up. Remember what I did. There we go. Okay, now we're on the other side. So we're gonna take his arm, you're gonna make sure it's placed in about the same spot as the other one so that they're not lopsided. And the same height from the neck. And if I get, I will probably do another video on these snowmen where it's not a three hour video. So I'm going into the body, into the arm, pulling my stitches so that they're being hidden. So you pull them tight enough because you don't want to spend all this time and then have your stitches showing. And if you can get the needle through a little bit and then pull it with your players, if you can't reach it with your fingers so you don't poke yourself. And I'm going to try to curve this arm up a little bit more. And if you want to, like I did on, on this one, I glue, I um, sewed his hand so it was um, face up so he could hold a bird. So we can do that with this one. And you're just going to want to make sure you get the wrist. If you're going to go through the glue on the, the wrist, you're going to have to use your players. I'm going to try to bypass it. So I'm kind of going in here by the arm and coming out on the hand. And I'm going to sew that hand so it's pointing up so that he can hold a bird. I hope you guys are seeing this because this is hard to sew this and show you at the same time. And then I'm going to do another stitch. And then I'm going to come out and I'm going to try to come out by the back of the arm so we can sew that down. I'm going to check my comments. Hi, Tiggy. Hi, Linda. I hope you guys are liking this because I'm sorry it's so long. I just was thought I was more prepared than I was. My cat wants to be fed and go outside. <laughs> if I go outside, it's going to be with a glass of wine. Okay, so I'm just sewing the arm down, the back of the arm, making sure my stitches aren't going to be shown. So you got to pull them tight enough. And then I'm just going to knot it off. I'm going to take a loop if I can. This is the easiest way for me to knot it. And then I'm going to go back under his arm and come out somewhere. So that I can hide that thread. And pull it. So there we got his hand and we could even have put that up a little bit more. I could probably just put a couple pieces of or some glue. 
Okay. Oh, we have his eyes and stuff to do, you guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, let's get his eyes done. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I need, I need a long needle. That one's really long. Okay, this one. Okay, I use buttons for his eyes. And I sew them on so that I can indent them. And I'm using black crochet thread. <clears throat> and I will show you a trick for doing his mouth. You're going to need to, if I can think of it... Or if you can find, um, there was one lady I was watching on YouTube that was doing embroidery stitches for the mouth. Because that took me a little bit. Um, let me get his eyes. So there's different eyes you can use. You can get... These ones, they come with a back, but you'd have to put the eye on before you sew his head shut. Otherwise, you can cut the, the post off and just glue them on. That's what I did to the first one. But I'm going to use these buttons. They have a little shank on the back. And I'm going to sew it in. And where's my needle? So I'm going to go. I have it knotted off in the back of the head. And I'm going to find where I want his eye because we have to remember his hat is going to come down. So you don't want his eyes too far up. So we're going to go about there. And you're not going to see, this is all going to be covered up when we do, when you put the hat on. So you're going to put your needle on there. You're going to go back through close by the same spot and come out the back of the head. So you're going to need a little bit of a longer needle. And if it gets twisted, just untwist it. And then you're going to pull it. Don't pull it too tight at first so it breaks. And then try to come back through by the shank. And then you can pull it and then go through the hole on the button and then come out like that. Okay. And then you're going to go back through underneath there, go back to the back of the head. And this is where you're going to pull it tight. And hopefully it's not going to break on you. So that's we indented his eye so now what I do is I'm going to take a couple of stitches here and then we're going to do the other side so that I can secure this so it doesn't move and like I said nobody's going to see this you don't have to tell them how you put the eyes on <laughs> if they really ask you and they want to know Okay, and then we're going to go to the, I'm just going to go through the, the head and then come out on this back part here. Okay, so we have that. So now we're going to try to get um, another eye close, same range or whatever distance apart. And then we need our button. Put your button on. Go through by the close to the same spot. You probably don't want to go through the same hole. And then pull that a little bit. Don't pull it too tight yet. And then come out underneath that button. 
and then go through the hole in the shank come out the bottom go back through to the back of the head underneath that button and then pull it tight so you got to pull a little bit at a time so you're this is where you got to have your strong thread so there's his eyes now we're going to knot this off and then we're going to do he's got eyebrows so take your loop up if you want to hold on to your loop so you can figure out which um way you've gone through and of course that didn't there we go so i would do that a couple of times and then now we're going to find out where we want his eyebrow so we're going to start on this side since we're over here so i'm going to go right there and i don't want to lose my thread no <laughs> And then I'm just going to take, oh, maybe about a three-eighths of an inch. It depends on how you want your ouch, <laughs> how you want your eyebrow to look. I just usually kind of do it like that. And then I'm just going to go under the back of this head to the other side. And I got to make sure I'm not bleeding. And then I'm going to come out on the other, by the other top of his other eye and take another stitch and i don't know if i'm going to have enough to do his mouth oh and don't pull them too tight because then you lose your stitches okay so we're gonna just knot this off and then we'll add another i'll do another thread and we'll do his mouth and I'm going to show you a trick for his mouth before you even start sewing it and marker doesn't really work on these if you're just going to draw I mean it it's probably will bleed so I would if you're going to do it that way I would try a scrap piece before you ruin your whole head you just sewed on So it took me a little bit to figure out the stitches on the mouth. So I'm just knotting off this back here again. And I'm just going to go run through and cut this off. And then I'll thread my needle again. Because I know I don't have enough for his head or his mouth. Who's still with me? I want... There's my kitty. You're going to try to make your first gnome. Is it Marshall? In a few minutes after watching. Well, good for you. Um, You can make a, let's see. <clears throat> you can make, tiny, make a tiny hole in the glue. Make a tiny hole and glue. A safety pin on the eyes at the end of the project. I guess I'm not understanding. Oh, make it put safety pins where the eyes are. I, I guess I'm not understanding. Okay, so we're going to do his mouth. Try to get this done. Um, I'm going to use embroidery floss. If I can find it because I moved everything and um, what did I do with it Okay, so I'm going to use embroidery floss. I'm going to take a fairly decent piece. My nose is running. And what did I just do with my needle? So 
I'm using all six strands of embroidery floss. Z, you'll have to wait. After I get done, we'll go outside. Yep. So make your knot. And what I did was, let me see if I can, um, tilt them. So what I did, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. I took, and this is kind of long. I took a piece of, if you use embroidery floss or, um, the crochet thread you can put it on there and see how you want his mouth to be shaped so you could do it if you wanted to do it like I in the the other in the videos that I the ones I did when I did it on Facebook I put them on Facebook I have my Facebook group so if you guys go over there and join my Facebook group you can um post your your pictures of what you make any projects you're working on, if you have any questions, that's where you'll see my funny video. So I think we'll do his face like that. And I think his head's a little crooked. So you're going to go through from the back of the head where you want the first stitch to go. So I'm going to kind of go right where do I want to go. I'm going to go right about here. So when I first start out, I'm going to take a stitch and I'm going to come up like <clears throat> in the middle. So I'm going to go back right like that. And you don't want it to be down. You don't want your needle here to be down here or up there. You want it to be in line from where you're going into here, okay? And now I'm going to take, this is hard to do. Here, let me see if I can move my camera because I'm trying to get really close to you guys. Okay, give me just a second here, because I want you guys to be able to see this. I got threads and everything. Okay, so we went in, and now if you want to start curving it, we're going to go in here, and I'm going to come out right I'm gonna come out I'm gonna come out right in this hole so I'm going in here my needles gonna come out here so don't push your needle all the way through until you're sure it's there and try not to split your thread okay and you're gonna pull that And now we're going to, if we, and this is where it's, I think it's called a back stitch, where I might take this, my needle, and go that way so that this top thread is up here. My, this is, my thread here is on the bottom. And I have had to change it when I do my stitches. Okay, we're going to go in and we're going to come out at this stitch right here. Oops, you can't see now. Okay, so we're going to come out right where that last stitch is. And you're not going to try to split it. And I'm going to go on the under, I'm going to go back under because I want my thread to be on the bottom. So you got to be mindful of that. So now we're going to start curving it. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to come right where that stitch is and I'm coming right out next to it. So practice, make a head and practice 
But I do have to tell you this, if you make a mistake and pull your thread out, you're going to see where it was. You will have black little fuzzy marks and it will show. So now we're going to take and we're going to go another stitch. You're going to come out by that hole, right that hole, right in front of that stitch. And now this one I want on the my top my thread on the top and my other stitch oh my stomach is just a growling and that's going to be my last stitch okay and i'm going to go to the back of the head And I got to get my stitches, or my last stitch is kind of loose. It still is. And there's our mouth. Okay. So now we're going to knot this off on the back. And you can make, if you want to make a nose, a carrot nose, you can. But I just made mine into a little ball. And, of course, I didn't make one. So, you knot that off. And there's that. Okay? So, now, oh, my gosh, you guys, it's 4.30. Oh. Okay, now I'm looking for... I'm looking for my orange felt. Okay, let me go. I got to get some orange felt. I'll be right back. And I already have a hat sewn, and I will show you. It's not very hard. So we're going to take. Let me get you guys back up here. So you're going to take some matching thread, and I just have probably two or three strands of orange embroidery floss. And I'm not even going to knot it. And I'm going to cut a small circle. And it's not very big. I don't even, I don't think I put this on the pattern. I might have forgotten. That's two inch circle. It might even be too big. And I'm going to go, my thread is going to go, I'm going to start on the wrong side. And I'm just going to take a running stitch all the way around. But don't pull your thread all the way through because you're not knotting it. Who's still with me? Who are my diehard subscribers? I want to know. Okay, if anybody that's on this right now, if you know you were my very first subscriber, let me know because I... I think I have an idea, but I'm not sure. So now we have this. So we have that. Now we're going to take a little bit of stuffing. And it doesn't take much. And we're going to add that to the nose. And I'm even going to cut my thread. Oh, I really didn't want to do that. <laughs> I was going to do, if I had to do a different way, uh. So if you wanted to use, if you could find just an orange button, if you wanted to make a carrot nose, that is totally up to you. But this is what I 
phone that I liked and did. Okay, it should be good. And then knot it. And then when you cut your threads off, if you want to cut them off a little bit longer, and then take and poke them in to the back of the nose with your scissors. Just so you can kind of hide them. And if you can, what I have also done is taken and cutting, cutting, like there's a word for you, cutting. I'm cutting. Cut some of this excess off. And we're going to hot glue this on. So you're going to get just a little bit of glue. You don't want a whole big gob. And you're going to put that on and you're going to be right in the middle. Where you put it is where it's going to be. And then I would press it and hold it. Okay, so now we'll put his feet on. We're going to let that dry. And if it doesn't look right, then you got to scoot it. That looks good. Okay, so now take, we got his feet glued. So who's still with me? Who are my diehards? Who's my diehards? Karen, she's here. Julie's here. And my sweet pea. Marcel, Gloria's here. You guys are awesome. Let's see, what did I do? do Marcel. The eyes should, the eyes you had with the backs on, with the backs on them are called safety eyes. Yep. But if you, if you're at the end of your project and you make a tiny hole and put the glue in. Oh, yes, I've done that. Yes, I see what she's saying. She's saying, um, Marcel was saying with the eyes with the post, what you can do is you can take and make a little slit where the eye is going to be. Put your glue gun in the hole. Put some glue in there. And then poke this through and hold it down. Okay? That's what she was talking about. Thank you for that tip. Okay, so let's get his feet on. You're going to make sure that you got him the right way. And where you want him sitting. And then I'm going to just take and put glue on the insides because some of it's going to show where he's standing and you're going to do that and let him sit and I will show you his hat okay so I got a and I don't think I put this in the pattern either oh, I forgot I may have um, this is 16 inches by about 11. And then you're going to fold it in half and you're only going to sew up. You're going to leave about three inches that you didn't sew. Okay. So you're going to sew all the way from the bottom. This is where it's going to go on his head to about three inches. You're not going to sew this. Okay. And then we're going to cut our fringe. So I'm going to make sure some of this is already trimmed off. So I will cut where it's fold, where the fold is. And then I'm going to cut strips down to about that three inch. You can do your strips thinner or make your hat a different way. But I'm grabbing both pieces of this fabric and cutting and then what I do because on him on sparkles or snowball I fold folded this up but I want this to be the right side of the fabric okay because if I do it 
let me show ya. So if I do it, like I got his hat and I'm going to put it on. If I fold it up like this, I have the wrong side. I didn't want that and I didn't want my seam showing. So I made it extra long and I fold it up almost to the fringe, not quite maybe. And I'm going to take and push that through, push the fringe so it comes out. And then when I turn this up, I have that finished edge. I like it. Then what I do before I put it on his head, I'm going to reach in here and in the front, you're going to have to be careful. I'm going to put a couple of little bit of glue and I'm going to fold that inside flap so I can glue it shut. You could come this way too, but you got fringe in the way. So I do like the front and the back and that's about it. Just so you can get it so it's tacked down so it doesn't move. And then you're going to fold that up. And you have to be mindful when you put the hat on that the seam is in the back of the head. Because I have had it twist on me and haven't paid attention. Ah! Oh, but he's under there, you guys. There he is. <laughs> he's like, let me out. I can't see. Okay. And there we go. And then when I put this on, I will tack it down here and around his head. And I'm just going to tack that down because I got it where I want it. So make sure your glue gun is clean. Get it down in there far enough and I don't have a glue stick. And we can try to add some hair. See how he looks. And then, oh, we can't forget, we're going to do his cheeks. I get my blush at the dollar store. Or if you already have some pink blush to put on for his cheeks. And I got, you could probably get a um, makeup brush there too. So we're just going to brush it on his cheeks. And I'm going in a circular motion. Cutie, cutie, cutie. Okay, and then we're going to tie his hat. And let me get some. And I need scissors. So I'm going to take some jute. I'm going to just double it up. And I'm going to tie it around the hat. And I like his, can you guys see? Let's see, let me get you. Let me get you back up so you can see because I got it. That might be a little too tall. I got to find a happy medium. Oops. Okay. Who wants to come and help me clean up my house tonight? Because it's a disaster. <laughs> Free snowman. Okay, so I'm going to take it. I'm going to knot this. times and you can leave these kind of long if you want but they kind of stick out and then I like to bring his tassels forward and what I've had to do on some if you have to cut these if they're too short you can do that what I've had to do on some of my snowmen is I've had to when their hat's too big here, I go through here and I'll come here and then I will stitch it down. But if you put it on like this, you don't have to do that. So I like some of his fringes coming up on his hat. And those are probably a little long for me. 
Okay, so let me see. We'll see if we can give them some hair and see what it looks like. So I'm just using faux fur. And we'll see what do I have. I have this really thin piece. And I'm going to cut it really thin, thin, thin. And I'm going to kind of cut it kind of long. You can do, you don't have to do hair, but I think he looked, he looked kind of cute with the hair. And now I'm trying to find my little brush that I use. And one thing I liked about Sparkles was he had the darker in his hair. So what, actually, I'm going to try it right now. I'm going to use. I'm going to use a marker and just because I want to try this and see if I can get some dark streaks in his hair, but I got to make sure it doesn't get on his face and I'm going to be your guinea pig. There is some in there. Some of this is going to be covered up. So I just got this on a piece of paper. And then what I would do is I would take a Kleenex and this just try to wipe it off if anything comes off. And I'll probably have to clean my brush if I get any ink. <clears throat> I am a messy crafter. I'm going to turn that over. Okay, so now I'm just going to tuck this in. And I got it going the wrong way. I wanted it to go the other way. So you're going to tuck this and be careful if you don't get any ink. And you're just going to tuck that under there. And then I would do another little piece. So let's do a marker because we've got to have it even. And then you're going to glue this on the other side. I am not sure about the hair thing. I haven't glued it yet though so I don't know the first one he turned out really cute and I don't know how the heck I did it pull that up you can cut the fur if you don't want it that long you can trim it too so let's try So I'm just going to try and trim some of this and see if I don't like that better. So this you got to play around with. This is, you don't have to do this. You don't, don't, don't. And if I don't like it, I'll just take it off.
But they never turn out the same, even though you, you are trying very, very hard. Okay, you guys let me know. Hair or no hair? Hair or no hair? Who's still here? We got to get this done. It's 5 o'clock. So I'm not going to glue it because I'm not sure if I like it. Okay, and then I would do a scarf. And I'm just going to take the one off of sparkles because we got to get done here. So I took a piece that was about um, an inch and three quarters. And you have to wrap it around and see how long you need it. And then I sewed a piece of the fabric from his shirt on there. Did a little tiny seam and fringed it. Did both ends. Okay? And you're going to want it the same width. And you can do it however long you want it. If you don't want to do this, you can just fringe the end of your scarf. And then I got my wooden snowflakes at Hobby Lobby. They come 54 in a little wooden tray box in the Christmas for $4.99, 40% off. So then you can put this on. If you don't want to tie that, but I'm going to just do some kind of tie here. And we can do that. And on sparkles, I did these. I just took some beads and put it, um, tied the end of the, um, I tied a knot in the end of the jute, like I do our surgeon's knot, like three, four loops, and thread that on. If you have a hard time threading this on, you can put glue on the tip here and do that. Otherwise, the other what I was going to try um, was I got beading. Um, it's beading thread. You can use that. Or they have the stretchy stuff. And then you can just string it on to your um, uh, beads. But you would probably, I don't know if you'd be able to get a knot in there or not. Let's, let's try. Um, and then you can put rhinestones. I bought rhinestones. They come in a huge container at Hobby Lobby. Um, like, I don't know, a lot of different sizes. And I glued those on his hat. Um, let's see, I had some beads that I just bought. If I can find them. If, 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 if I can find the end of this thread. Well, I know I had them, but my house is a mess, so they're just not around. I just bought some brand new beads. And these aren't them. Who's still here? Okay, so we're gonna try something. I like the jute. I'll show you both ways. So then you would take and you would take like I started with the smallest bead that would fit on. And I used wooden beads also because I like to keep the to kind of bring in the 
snowflake uh, from the wooden from the snowflake to the wooden bead. And I did clear and then I would do like a color that matched the snowman. I had some really pretty ones you guys that I bought. Oh, I did, I did. And I was getting everything ready and I don't know what I did with them. I did, I did. Ah, I found them, I found them. Okay. So they just had these beads on sale at Joann's. It was a whole string of them, $5.99. They had them on sale for 70% off. <clears throat> so then I would make three sets of like these little beaded tassels. And then I tie that around the hat where we tied it off the tassel. Karen, she says hair. Sweet Pea says hair. Hi, Dawn. So cute with hair. Hair looks great. Karen's still here. Gloria's still here. So then you can put, I try to do the beads that match um, like a, a color that matches the snowman. You don't have to do beads. You can do you don't have to do the tassel at all. I, I seen these on a snowman, I believe somewhere if it's Pinterest. And then I would do three of these like this. You can do them differently or the same, but I would use the same colors. So they, they look like this and then tie it around the hat. And you just want to tie it so that you make sure that they stay. Okay. So then I would tie it and you want it to... You want it to hang down on the hat, but not going down in his face. So then I would take three of these together and tie them together around the hat, like this. See, and I used more wooden beads on that one. And I got my wooden beads at um, Joann's. And I think I got some at Hobby Lobby, okay? So that's the tassels and then I just glued rhinestones on here and his buttons the buttons I just put on I took some crochet thread and I had that big tray see I can't find anything you guys I should walk you around my house right now and you could see my mess I did a whole container for the buttons that I was talking to you guys about, those beautiful brown buttons. Here they are. There's my bag of rice. <laughs> oh, I love you guys for sticking around. Okay, so this, these are the buttons. You can't tell me these aren't beautiful because look at those. All those beautiful brown buttons. And I got these at walmart in where the sewing and stuff is and they came in like a plastic jar and they might have been like 5.99 but there's a ton of them in there i mean look at these we could put these little flowers on him and i put there the ones i had that i used square these ones i didn't get out of there but they're beautiful i mean that's i mean they go perfect with that so i love 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 those so, okay, um, what else are we forgetting? We got, so his button, so what I did with his buttons, and I'll show you quick, I just took some crochet thread, took a, some of it, went up, you gotta go in one hole, and it kind of depends if you have two holes or four. So I would come up one, go back down.
And then I would bring the other, the ends up through the other holes. One through one hole, one through the other hole. And then just tie it off. So I went, I started from the back, went up with one thread down with, and then down the other hole, and then came up to the front with both threads and knotted off. And I usually put a little dab of glue before I knot it so that I know it will stay. Tie it tight, and then you cut that off. And you have the cute little button and then you glue it on awesome okay i think we're gonna end this you guys <laughs> i hope i end it <clears throat> thank you so so much for staying with me i love you guys hi shirley hi don thank you guys you guys Thank you, Janine, for coming, if that's how I say it. You guys are awesome. Thank you for showing up and being in my first live video. His, his hair looks kind of a mess right now. But he's, he's all good. Thank you guys so much. I love you. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.